Tuesday, it's hump day. Our third day for 2012. I'm already exhausted. <laughs> Not great to see you, great to have your company. And of course, don't forget, we're live from 9am every day now. So make sure you're up and about, get into the circle. Yumi and I are very excited. We always get to share the host with incredible guest hosts. Today, though, raise the bar a whole new level. Please welcome Olivia Newton-John. Yeah! A bit, it's the gorgeous Denise Scott. Yeah. Great to have you, ladies. Great to be here. Just wonderful. We've got the blondes versus the brunettes today. Mm. <laughs> and I'm more natural. <laughs> <laughs> So much to talk about with you two, which we'll get to later in the show, including okay. Olivia. Your we new films are so excited to welcome back to the Circle Couch our first guest for today. He is a very familiar face on our screens and stage, both here and in his native UK. He is at the start of his comedy mega tour, Laughter Is My Agenda, touring Australia until May. And this man is losing it on the couch because he is so excited about seeing Olivia Newton John. <laughs> Say hello to Stephen K. Amos. Tell you how excited I am to be here. Oh my! I mean, you're an icon. You're a living legend. Can I touch you, please? Just. Touch oh, you. so sweet. Oh. <laughs> Stephen, in any way, shape, or form, or do you just want to come and sit next to Olivia? I wouldn't and... mind swapping seats. Would you? <laughs> Can we do that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, we thought about this. We thought about it. Yeah. I'm so so excited. Stephen, as a performer, what what have you been inspired about from Olivia? What have I been inspired by? Yeah. Well, where do I start? Um, <laughs> and the singing, the dancing, the the gorgeousness, and the the the, the graciousness. And I saw you on Oprah or. Ellen or one talking about um, some of those stuff that you still got from Greece, for example, yes. with these jeans. Oh, can I have them? <laughs> You've done your own TV show though recently, haven't you? In the UK, Stephen. I have. Yes. And was that great fun to do? It was quite different, uh, different discipline. When you start doing live stuff, you get an immediate reaction from the audience, apart from this man in the front going. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you get people laughing, but with the TV show, as you know, we, you know, do your films and stuff, you get a chance to do it again and again and again, and sometimes I found that you lost kind of the, the funny or the, the reason why it was good in the first place, um, but it's a really good discipline, I'm very pleased I did it. How's it been received? Has been received mm. up and down. <laughs> because, I know because what I did was I didn't just do stand up. I did sketches. And I had guest comics. I didn't. I wanted new comics to come on the yeah, show as yeah, well. Yeah. And the show was meant to go out on a Friday night. Uh, at about 8 o'clock and they put it out at 10pm so it would have been a slightly different show. Mm. Mm. Steve, can I ask you about the importance of inspiring people in your life, particularly when you're young? I used to be a teacher and I loved reading that you had a particular teacher that gave you, I think, three ticks and an A in an exercise book about a story that you'd written. You've still kept that exercise book. What role did that teacher... <laughs> teacher play in determining what you do for living today? Well, uh, he was my English teacher, Mr Matthews, and uh, I was one of those kids who didn't pay attention in school at all, didn't really want to be there, and, um, and he just encouraged us to read and write stuff, use our imaginations, and I wrote this story on a bus. I mean, I used to get buses, not anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and basically, I wrote this story, and, and it just went all over in my head, this imagination, it ran wild, and I didn't know back then that the storytelling would actually be what I now do as a job. So if it wasn't for him encouraging me and giving me good marks, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. My, my job is to find the funny and look at the funny enough in, in stuff. Like you were talking earlier about whether it was a, a story about someone being racist about somebody's hair. Yeah. Now my take on that is, you know, that sounds ridiculous to me, yeah. but my funny angle would be that uh, I come from a big family myself, seven kids, and uh, to, to keep us entertained, we used to model ourselves on the pop stars of the day. So in our case, we were like the Jackson 5. Yeah. And, by, and by that I mean we had flared trousers, <laughs> afro hair, and our dad used to beat us. <laughs> besides the beatings. Are they impressed by what you do? Do you know, in, in, in my show that I did, I do my mum. I don't, don't do my mum. I do... I, 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 you impersonate. I impersonate. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. 
Yeah. Like, I impersonate my mum, and she's the one person in my family goes, that does not me. I'm like, mum, this is exactly you. Well, this one is very interesting. I'm a 32-year-old man with a collection of about 60 My Little Ponies. Strangely. <laughs> Strangely, my dates seem to love it, but they may just be polite. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Brony. My little oh, pony. Oh my god. He'd get my vote. Uh, Brony, call me. <laughs> If you like horses, it's probably very nice. I've got a very quick one from Lisa. My husband worked with a guy who went to Africa on a hunting tour and he shot a giraffe. Oh. As a surprise for his wife, he had it stuffed and sent home to Australia. When his wife was at work, he had a wall removed from the house and the giraffe was kneeling in the living room. Kneeling! His wife was so impressed that she left him. <laughs> are priceless, apparently. Keep your emails coming to circle. Oh, the gorgeous you. Yeah. you always seem to dazzle us with your recipes. What have you got for us today? Well, I thought we'd do something a little bit risque and I'm going to do fatty old pork belly today yes. because um, it's just something that I think it's a really lean, oh, good cut of meat. It's not that lean, but I'm going to put a really good salad with it and what we're going to do first is actually make the dressing and make the pickling liquid for some carrot and daikon okay. that um, we're going to make and I've already made a big jar of it and the thing about it is, is that you can pre-prepare all of the things that we're going to do today the pork belly the um, carrot and daikon and then you just put it together whenever you feel like it Love it. Okay. but the thing about it too is today we're going to either deep fry the pork belly, which is my favourite, or if people are too scared to deep fry, then we can, um, <laughs> <laughs> then we can always just, you Oh, know. no, deep fry. We won't be scared of deep frying. Are always you scared, scared of deep frying? Are you scared of deep frying? Explode or something. But the, thing, try it. the thing about deep frying is, is that you need to get the temperature right, and the temperature yeah. is between 160 and 180, and if you've got that right, when you put things in the wok or however you're going to do it, mm -hmm. it just always works. What did you just do there? So this is white, white, white sorry, white rice vinegar, mm -hmm. and it's a really good one. It's a Thai one, it hasn't got a really acidic taste. Okay. And what we're going to do, and this is a dressing that we use a lot at Long Grain, and it's just basically the white vinegar, the white sugar, some coriander roots. Coriander root is. So this mm. is. Let me smell that. That's where all the oh, flavour is. That's where all the flavour is. So don't use the leaves and all the stem and everything because that goes all brown and murky. This is where all the flavour is in the coriander I've root. I've seen those. Where do you find those? Well, just buy it on the. Um, it's just I've just cut it off the coriander oh, okay. things. I've never seen that. Either. Yeah, and then the other thing is is some pickled new season or spring garlic which I've pickled, and that just goes in there to flavour that. You love pickling. Is pickling a bit of a dying art? It is. My grandmother loves pickling. She used mm. to pickle all her cucumbers and stuff from the garden and, and stuff like that. So that's sort of Do where... You pickle? Because I've never pickled No, before. but it's really good for your digestion. Yeah, yeah so this is, and this is how it all works together. This, because of this um, beautiful pickled daikon and carrot, this is how it's going to break, help break down that mm. pork fat mm. and cut into that Perfect. fattiness. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the art of cooking, really, is yeah, to sort, sort of balance. put things together. The great balance. There's sauerkraut in Germany, there was the user, and yeah. the Japanese have the radishes yeah. and things. And, um, it is very, I mean, delicious but very rich pork belly, isn't it? You yeah. only need a little amount. Yeah. So I'm just going to, this is something that's it. really easy to do if you've got one of these mandolins instead of, you know, mm -hmm. Julianning and stuff. If you, Georgie or Liv, if you would just want to, do you want to yeah, just cut, cut that my into finger off? I'll do it. <laughs> very sharp. Got, people laughed at me yesterday in the morning. And then just cut that one in the, in the same okay, size. Okay. And um, yeah. So mutton daikon radish is really easy just to buy. You just buy them at your local. Yeah. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a farmer's market or something like that. Yeah, or, daikon always Asian supermarkets. You know, it's all available there. Mm -hmm. And then what we are going to do is after. You know, we've cut all of that up. Not this small. No, not really. no I'm no, going to actually cut it into um, dice like that. And okay. then put it into that bowl there, Georgie's mm -hmm. carrot. Okay. And the daikon. Basically, I'm going to do quicker if you do the daikon. Yeah, I want to see what it's going to do. <laughs> do the same. Oh, see that? I'm like, how do you not cut your fingers off? I always wanted I to learn that one. Well, darling, being next to you, I might cut my finger off and then I'll be upset. <laughs> <laughs> just been sharpened for the new year, so be very careful. Okay, no. <laughs> they're gorgeous knives, aren't they? So, okay, so that's easy. So we've just got carrot and daikon ready. Carrot and daikon, really okay. easy. What, what I've also done in the pickle that I've made for us today is I've actually julienned some ginger. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah. And also I've de-seeded some long red chilies. And all these fresh And just fresh oh, just cut all good. that up in, and that will all last in the fridge if you, you know, put that vinegar and um, sugar is mm -hmm. preserving, so. Great. How long would this last for, Martin? For ages. Up. I've had, I've used that um, constantly for a long time, 
so six to eight months easily. Oh, wow. Just okay. kept in the jar, but just make sure you use clean utensils each time you put it out. So after that liquid's um, dissolved and all the flavours have gotten into the vinegar, mm -hmm. just cool it, obviously, and yep. you're putting it on cold. Okay. And mix it all together and then just jar it in a clip top jar. Or, that's it. And that's it, and it will turn into that. Okay. Delicious. Now we have to go, do we want to do anything with our pork now, or do you want to wait till the next The segment? pork just goes into our steamer. Okay. For one hour. Oh, so we're steaming it first? Steam it first, and then when we come back, I'll go into the next thing that um, preserves it and also gets it ready for that crispness that it's going to get for our salad. The crash <laughs> <laughs> Please put your hands together for Martin Boat, everyone. We have a wonderful email in reference to you, Denise, looking like the German Chancellor, <laughs> Angela Merkel, and it goes like this. So, dear Angela Merkel, hello, yeah, guten Tag. Sie, sie is so much like an Angela that I think that she should go to a Facebook or an YouTube. <laughs> Mein Gott, a little swash in the lick sticking when she is the real McCoy at the real Merkel. Good <laughs> 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 Willem. Germans. Oh, you can do it so well. Uh, Facebook's been going berserk as well. We've been talking about, in addition to Denise looking like the Chancellor of Germany. Can we move on from that? We can, <laughs> darling. Um, we've been talking about when you go into someone's house and you see something, a little ornament that freaks you out and gives you an insight into that person. Jules on Facebook said that a person she walked into once had an odd collection of cats. Live cats around 10, but then stuffed cats all around the house and she oh. thought that was freaky and Natalie walked in and a person had dead snakes in glass jars. Oh. I don't think so. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, here's an interesting one from uh, Zara. Her mum has a huge artistic portrait of her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how huge. It's <laughs> confident though, isn't it? It is confident. Yeah. I have to agree about the cats. I think if I went to a friend's house and they had more than one cat, yeah. I'd be a little bit... Yeah, a bit weird. You mean a live or... Yeah, yeah. More, uh, more than, more than one, one live cat. Don't think really? I used to have two. Are you going to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> to read this one out from Sandy who once shared a house in London with a bloke and another girl and the bloke never cleaned his room right oh. so when he was away she and her female housemate decided to clean his room as a gift to him oh. but they found a weird object on his bed head it was sort of an old and leathery pouch thingy about the size of a grapefruit you're getting a picture here of this yeah. leathery thing neither of us wanted to touch it so we dusted around it and it turns out it was a wild African buffalo's scrotum oh. <laughs> 